An important concept in any type of security, whether it's computer or physical or any type of security, is authentication. More or less authentication is proving you are who you say you are. And there are three basic forms of authentication. It's something you know, something you have, or something about you. So let's take a look at some of the different ways we can prove we are, again, who we say we are. The first one, which is probably something that all of us are familiar with, is the username and password. This is called something you know. This is something that you know. It's something in your brain that you remember. So something you know, your username. What is your username that you use to log in? What's your password that you enter with your username? Now keep in mind, 50% of this combo here is your username and 50% is your password. So if the bad guys can figure out your username, they already have half of what they need to log in as you. So be careful with your username. For personal use, you might want to have a unique username. You don't want to make it too obvious. Now, in a corporate environment, you're pretty much stuck with whatever they give you. Now, I will tell you, bad guys can easily find out the way that they assign usernames. And then from there, they can try to figure out your password. So usernames, be careful with it. Um, it's 50% of logging in as you. Passwords, general rules of passwords. I'm sure you've heard of some general rules and passwords, but we're going to cover them anyways. Now, I will say this. There is an inverse relationship between security and usability. What I mean by that is as security goes up, usability goes down. It becomes harder to use equipment and stuff like that. So for any security team, there's a balance between the two. Passwords are definitely an example of how some security groups can just blow it out of the water, making it very hard for any users to use the technology at work. So there's a gentle balance there. The first rule is avoid any word that can be found in a dictionary. What I mean by this is simply that. Don't use a word that you find in a dictionary. We have dictionary hacks. We have programs that will throw a whole bunch of words that are found in dictionaries at a login to try to break it and see how they can get in. So you don't want to use any words that you can find in a dictionary. You want to avoid at least that particular hack. Do not keep a copy of the password where others can see it. I've been an educator for over 14 years. I've been a K-12 classroom teacher for around eight. I can't tell you how many teachers used to take out the pen and paper or pen and a stick it note, write down their password, and then put it underneath their mouse pad or put it under their keyboard or put it on their monitor. You don't want to write down your password and put it in a place that people can find it. Now, some people will tell you don't write down your password at all. This really depends on the policies, et cetera, et cetera. But if you do write down a password, don't put it in a place that people are going to look. And people are going to look under the mouse pad. They're going to look on the monitor. They're going to look under the keyboard. Put it somewhere, if you have to have one, somewhere safe. Next, probably one of the most important tips on passwords is don't give out your password to anyone for any reason. Repeat this. Do not give out your password to anyone for any reason. For those of you who are, who are watching this in high school, don't give your boyfriend or your girlfriend your password. They don't need to know that. And it's not a, you know, it's not a sign of disrespect. Well, you don't love me. No, no, no. You keep your password to yourself. That's your password. If your company ask for a password. You don't give them your password. There is not a system administrator out there who needs your password to access your account. In fact, a good hack, a good social engineering hack, which we'll talk about social engineering later, is if you can get on a company phone, let's say you're in a big company somewhere, if you can get access to one of the corporate phones, you show up as a corporate phone number. You pretend that you work with the IT department and you pretend that there's a big problem and you need to log on and password in order to fix the problem. You'd be amazed how many people will give up that information readily. Now, I'm not saying do that. But what I am saying, again, is don't give out your password to anyone for any reason. All right, next one. 
mix upper and lower case letters. Passwords are usually case sensitive, meaning let's say your password is password. Don't make that your password, by the way, but your password is password. If you capitalize the P and the W, that's different than all lowercase. It's different than all uppercase. So you want to mix and match upper and lowercase letters. Add some numbers and special characters to your password. In other words, add a period, add a exclamation point, add an ampersand, add different characters into your password. It makes it that much harder for somebody to guess. Also, finally, something I think we're all guilty of to some degree, and that is don't use the same password for all your accounts. As I'm recording this, we've heard about uh, Target being hacked. We've heard about a massive hack that happened that affected lots of websites, that affected lots of passwords. The problem is, is if somebody can guess your password, let's say that somebody hacks your email account, most people are going to use the same password for everything. And so now they have access to all your information. Again, most people use the same username for everything. And so if somebody can get your password for one account, most people have the same password for all their accounts. So mix up your passwords. All right, the next concept I want to talk about is something called a smart card. This would be something you have, you physically have on you. Also known as a chip card or integrated circuit card, uh, stores a small amount of information that helps to identify the owner of the card. When I was working for the FBI, we used to have identity badges that we would use. We'd put them against the door. It'd go beep. It had our information in it. Then we put in a password and then we could enter the facility. We could open up a door. The smart card information is in that ID. And so let's say that somebody stole your ID. If they don't have your password, they still can't get inside a door. If they know your password but don't have your card, they can't get inside the door. And so it's a combination of something you know your password and something you physically have your ID with a smart card that gets you access to uh, different rooms, different buildings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So smart cards, something you have, and you can probably see how this would make it even more secure to get in somewhere or to access something, because if somebody has your username and password, they still have to have a chip in order to gain access. Otherwise, it just they can't get in. The next one is a Security token. This is also something that you have. I've put a image on this video of my Battle.net. This was a, a key fob. What this is, is that it was a free program that Blizzard sent out. If you have a World of Warcraft account or other uh, Blizzard accounts, Battle.net accounts, you would have a key fob on your phone or you could buy a key fob directly from them. It is based on an algorithm that generates a number. This algorithm is locked in with your account. And so I could give you my username and password for my Battle.net account. But if you don't have the key fob, you can't get in. You can't access this. It's an excellent method of verification. It really is powerful. It's a great um, addition to the username and password. Again, when I was working for the federal government, we would have a key fob. It was actually a separate little key fob that we used to put on our ID badge or attached to the ID badge off a of lanyard. And we would put in our username and password for our email. And then here's the number. And then we could get into our email. So security tokens, excellent, excellent additional method of verification, of authentication. Then we have biometrics. Biometrics is really, really cool and really, really kind of scary. What we're looking at here is some measurement about you. This is something about you as a person that helps you know, prove you are who you say you are. And we can use things like fingerprints, retina scans, voice analysis. It is picking up some quality of who you are in order to gain access. What's kind of cool is when I was going through undergrad, remember Tampa, Florida, Disney is an hour drive away. And so if you ever bought a pass, a year pass to Disney, I remember my first time I bought a year pass because I love going to Disney World. 
And if you live that close, you're going maybe twice, three times a year. The minute you go after two times, three times, you buy the pass. It's cheaper that way. Well, they've got a special line for your your card holders, pass holders. And you'd go in and you'd put your fingers into this device. And I was like, are you taking my fingerprints? And they're like, no, Disney doesn't do your fingerprints. But what they were doing is they were measuring the space from the knuckle to that fleshy part. And that's a way that they would um, identify that you were the rightful holder of the pass. Of course, when I did it, it never worked. So they just kind of flag you through. But we have, again, three different types of ways to prove you are who you say you are. Again, remember something you know, username, password, something you have, a smart card, smart chip, key fob, and something about you, biometrics. And the reason why I say it's also kind of scary is because this is information about you. These are fingerprints being stored. These are retina scans being stored. These are voice prints being stored. All right, our next video, we're going to look at how to protect your data.